Well, it's assembled. It kind of scares me because because it's triangulated, everything is locked into such tight position that, you know, any change changes all three of them, which it's supposed to be, but it's almost worrisome. I'm in my closet. My closet laboratory. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So today, I'm actually going to be talking about the OSD. Now, originally, I really, really wanted to dive into this and really get to work at it, which I did, but I spent weeks and weeks and weeks thinking about and designing and really trying to figure out how to make a nine-armed delta. So instead of two on each place, there's actually three. And I was going to try to do this with the minimal use of bearings. So there's a couple of different ideas and designs, and one of them that I came up with has an offset. So what I mean by that is the pivot points on a U-joint, right, are all right in the center. So it pivots around the center piece with two interlocking parts, right? Two, let me set this down, two C-clamp pieces, right, that, that pivot, right, all the way around, but it's always in the center point. Well, what I wanted to do was try to see if I could offset that center point and still make it work. So my buddy uh, Richard, um, he's been trying this idea and it's it works, but I haven't had any uh, official outcome yet because he's been really busy and that's perfectly cool. But he's been playing with it and it does function, but there's some calibration stuff that needs to be done. Because remember, the joints that you normally put on there pivot all in one spot. Well, the pieces I want, right, they pivot here and here. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is, is you have an offset here that you have to put in the system in order for it to know what's going on. So it's really kind of crazy and I decided to not go that route. Instead I built this here. So as you can see here, and I'll get you a close-up in a minute, there's a pivot point here and here, right? And they're, they're offset. So they're offset down and over. So what that means is you know, if this is if if uh, well if this is your pivot point, looking straight down it, right? That means if you come out and down, right? As long as you're somewhere here, it doesn't really actually it doesn't really matter as long as you're on this plane or this axis around this piece. You can be way out here or down here. It doesn't matter as long as the bottom piece matches. So if the bottom and the top are the same, then all is well. And what's what's cool is that. Um, if you only put two on these two sides, this one would lock its axis with this shaft or this, this rail, I mean. So I'll show you that in the video, um, what I mean about that. And we'll get into that in a minute. This video is going to be kind of long, but if you're interested in seeing this three armed Delta and my, um, build process upon it, then you're going to want to watch this. Now here's what's crazy. I wanted to use bearings because they're silk smooth. I didn't want to use, um, originally I didn't want to use 3D printed parts, but for prototyping, of course, all of these are printed in PLA. Uh, Matter Hackers Translucent Red, I'll link it down in the description if you want some. It's a pretty cool color. It's good, great, actually, great plastic. Um, so all these are like that. I did buy 10 millimeter um, rods. I bought the cheapest stuff I could possibly find. I think it was less than $30 shipped for three uh, one meter long pieces, which that means I had about this much of each stick left. So this one stick, one stick, one stick, so three pieces. So right at about $10 a piece, which is pretty cheap for 10 millimeter OD. I think it was 8.5 inside diameter. Um, and that stuff in this length is stiffer than snot. It's fantastic. Um, so you've got all these 3D printed parts. You've got the shafts to make. You've got all the bearings. You've got the three tubes. I made new pieces here on the top, um, of course, and I redesigned them. The only thing I want to change is move these out, but eh, I wanted to keep it inside this circumference of some kind. So in general, um, it does function and it does work, and I'll show you that in a minute. But what I wanted to, to get to is this crazy thing, which is there are so many parts.
that I had to make, okay? So look, I'm not going to include the pieces on this plate, so the bearings and all this stuff on the plate. I'm just going to include this plastic piece and then everything that is on this side, not including this stuff. Just the pieces to put it together, okay? You ready for this? I'm not including the ball bearings or the shielding. If I did that, it would be astronomical. I'm just including the base pieces, the bearings, the shafts, the tubes individually, um, the 3D printed parts, and that's it. Okay, 84 bearings, which again, I tried to make a design that was lower bearings, but realized that it'd be better off just to do it this way. And I even doubled up the bearings in certain spots to give it maximum performance because again, I'm not too concerned about weight, um, although it's pretty light and I'll show you that in a minute. So 84 bearings, okay, 42 shafts I had to cut by hand, uh, three millimeter shafts. Uh, most of them were pretty well the same length, except for a few that were different sizes. Um, 12 pivot points, or 12 pivots, so 12 of these, um, oh wait, I'm sorry, 12 of these inner pivot parts. Um, oh, I guess that's all the pivot parts. Nine carbon fiber rods, three end holders, okay, so one, two, three, and then one end effector, 157 parts, yeah? not including what's on this plate and stuff. If we put on there the plate, we've got three plates, three magnets for the hull switches, nine wheels that I made by hand, um, 18 bearings on the inside of there, nine shafts on that thing, okay, 18 fasteners, three washers, six nuts, three clamping belts, 72 parts total, in total, right? So the slides and everything on them, all just the end effector pieces, 229 parts. Now, if you wanted to add the ball bearings and the race housings and the ball race holders, you know, or the ball holders, that's insanity. It's really crazy to think how many parts are on here. Um, how much was the weight? Let me look. I forgot. Okay. So I found it. I texted it to Richard one time and uh, I forgot what it was. So here it is. Um, so the heaviest parts are the stainless steel shafts, very heavy. Um, so the entire apparatus, okay, all the way up into the plates, don't include anything on the plates, but the, these big pieces um, and everything else attached right at 400 grams. So for the amount of industrial strength kind of situation and triangulation and stuff that I've got going on here, it's not too bad. Um, I looks like I wrote down here one... Uh, three and a quarter inch long, 10 millimeter outside diameter, 8.5 inside diameter. Um, weigh right at about one ounce. So not, not, not like nothing. One, uh, 2.83 grams for a little three and a quarter inch piece of that carbon fiber. So, and it's super stiff stuff. I mean, it is crazy stiff. Um, all right. So here's the deal. I filmed this like a month ago and I've got some live stream time lapse to put in there. I've got some raw footage to put in there. And this video is just going to be me making this and telling you how it works. And then when all that's done, I'll let you know my thoughts on it. So here we go. All right, so that's how you take a couple of big pieces. Turn them into some small pieces. These things are pretty tough. And they literally don't weigh anything. 10 millimeter outside diameter, 8.5 inside diameter. All right, I've decided to take some light sandpaper and scuff the edges. Give the glue something to adhere to. All right, well there you go. Now I can glue these guys on here and use this as my set. Just peachy. Gonna use some epoxy on here and glue them up. 
this will keep my all oh, my rod lengths identical. This is going to be a little hard to see, but what I wanted to show you was that there's only two arms connected to this. The third one is completely missing as I'm rebuilding it. And what I want to show you is this. So this thing can do whatever it wants in all directions, and that's because it's only attached at two points. So with three points, even though these two are stationary, um, I believe this will still swing this way but it won't swing this way and therefore this is not allowing this tip to stay perfectly in the right spot right so tomorrow when we get just two up we're gonna test and make sure that that idea is correct you can kinda of see about how, we're, how far it can go too about there and it's actually hitting it's getting into a bind you can feel them. Anyway, tomorrow's assembly day. I am going to take these blocks off and machine the corners as I need a fraction of a bit more room there. Other than that, we're good. Should be good. Alright, I got a bunch of these 3 millimeter shafts, stainless steel, and I need to cut them down to size. So we're just going to use the lathe use a little sharp tool and cut it off call it good I got a couple different sizes I need to cut though
so we got all the arms cut uh, looking pretty good only got a couple left so these are for the end effectors uh, or the rods I should say and then these are for the other sections these are three millimeter longer than the rest so yeah that's quite a few of them I cut but they worked pretty well I just cut down the uh, the center points and then broke them off so you can see the edges have like edges on it so that's a factory on the end and those are the ones I cut and I broke them off and sanded them worked really well assembly time I'm gonna clean them first So these fit so well and I've got a little offset on there that even without the shafts they sit on the races just right before I even put the pins in. So I, I fitted this stuff to be perfect and have a little spring in these plastics to hold everything in place even when there's no pins. So hopefully nothing works loose. <clears throat> Alright so the reason for the tri-arm design that I like it, this is a good and bad. It's bad because if anything isn't perfect then everything gets in a bind but if it is perfect then as you can see as long as this end is square it's always square so the end effector and the plate that this attached to are always perfectly perpendicular to each other and that's including any of any of these moves so you can see that these always always stay the same which is why I like the tri-arm because then it holds everything perfectly in position no matter what. Now there is like no play in here, none at all. So if any of the delta configuration is is off, the whole thing is going to get in its it get in a bind. So if the, if that happens, I'll just end up taking the bottom rod off because these bearings and setups really make everything very rigid. But yeah, so now I'm going to assemble the whole thing. But I wanted to kind of show you. I think technically you should be able to run the delta with only one arm, or I mean two attached only, but I don't know, kind of be worth something to try. So you better hope that your configuration is right or this is going to not work out. Well, it's assembled. It kind of scares me because because it's triangulated, everything is locked into such tight position that, you know, any change changes all three of them, which it's supposed to be, but it's almost worrisome. Like, I, I physically can't move this one up and down. It's locked. You know, I can move it this way. But if I try to move it. Anyway, that's why I wanted to triangulate everything. So everything stayed in place. No matter no matter how the the angle is on the, the sides. Oh boy. This is great footage, isn't it? Let me try the other way around. So the arms really need to be out further for this to to show its proof of concept. So it needs to be like this. And I need to hold the... I guess I need to hold two of these. Oh, this is so confusing. <laughs> 
That's really confusing. Okay, well, anyway, now I'm going to go take off the rest of the arms and actually assemble this thing. And pray I didn't screw anything up. Right now it just feels very strange, like it's locked up. But I know it's not. It's moving correctly. Now this whole thing actually doesn't weigh too much. I'm going to take this plate off and feel actually how much the assembly weighs. assembled it is a bit of a monster look at that tri arm and it is working I'm kind of concerned that if anything here at all is out of whack then the whole thing is gonna always be out of whack which is a, a huge problem so everything needs to be like like very very precise um, I don't really want these plastic parts. I'd rather have machined parts, but I wanted to test the idea and make sure it was going to even work. Elijah, is it going to work? Yes. Awesome. So now, I think I want to try to get a bubble level and put it here. A bubble. Bubble level. And then uh, I got to machine these belt tensioners because although they fit through here, I'm going to machine the edges off so they don't hit the edges. And uh, then we'll put it back together and put a bubble level on there and see how level it is through its entire course. But what's cool is you can move it anywhere and it doesn't get in a bind. Everything has free movement all the way out to the maximum potentials. I can get even in these weird spots like here where I could never do that before. So, yeah. See what happens. work so much effort it does a three-armed I guess a nine-armed Delta work let's find out I don't have the uh, zebra but we can raise it up move it down move it around let's see what happens go home It appears if you engineer it right, yes it will. Look at that, it's sticking way out <laughs> past the edge. Uh, and it, it does have a tiny rock to it, but it's all the way out. Let's go in the middle. Uh, it appears it Oh, that's the belts at that point. I can see it. But it does not rock this way at all. It is solid. Alright, so a little bit of movement we do have. Appears to be... Appears to be the belts. I can see the whole belt moving. Cool. Um, so I can try printing one thing. 
What? Error accessing the card. Oh, there it is. So we're gonna do octagonal test. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Shouldn't go all the way down. The lizard. Go. It's alive. Welcome back, if you're still here, congratulations. So here's my thoughts. Um, for me personally, this it did strengthen up everything. Um, not quite as much as I was hoping, because again, I mean, I knew this when I started, but I wanted to, do the, I, I wanted to try this anyway. I wanted to see what would happen. So these pieces up here, um, you know, they're still only riding on three points and, you know, matter of fact this whole entire beam actually twists a tiny little bit and that little bit can create the little bit of things that you see the little glitches that you see um, but overall good success with with this thing and I haven't tried cutting anything with the uh, CNC attachment I actually just been trying to calibrate it and learn about how it's functioning and all this kind of stuff um, but in the end um, my guess is that if you had uh, really really strong slide rails and great geometry on the slide rail so nothing moved here then two rails two rods is probably fine but it's kind of cool because it just triangulates everything and it as you saw in that video it locks it all in place which is kind of unique to what I was trying to achieve which no matter what's going on in the system it's always like locked in that plane because my biggest problem was the shift in that plane um, on on the end effector here and you know you you really almost can't do that because of how it's set up but anyway it's not perfect but it did work and it might be one of the only nine armed delta printers like this if you've ever seen one like this i've seen other type of triangulated arm situations but not quite like this where there's three of them i mean theoretically i could take this one completely out and because those are triangulated it would run with two arms now the problem is, is when you get past a certain point, it's going to have a hard time swinging out. But that's just part of the geometry. But I could actually run it without this arm if I stayed over here in like this area, um, which would be kind of something pretty cool because then I could, I could open the frame, right? I could remove this whole entire arm, and as long as I was printing out here where everything is being held, you know, it would function. I don't recommend it, but you could actually do that because it's triangulated between this arm this arm and those two points so it actually would work it's kind of neat um, one of these days i might actually do that for fun just to prove it's possible but i'm sure it won't be great so anyway um so that's where i'm going to leave you out with this thing i've gotten really busy doing other things and i really want to get i just want to finish this thing um, i do have the pei sheet for it um, and then i wanted to make the heating element 
and I wanted to pack all these electronics under here, which requires me to make my own circuit board for the bottom. That's an attachment. And I want to make some stuff for the extruders. And you got to remember, this project, although taking me a really long time, um, I took a few breaks in there to actually do a project for someone else to bring in a little cash to buy parts for it, right? So I don't have just the money to buy parts for this. I had to actually do it that way. So that means I took a break from it to do that, to make money for this, to buy these things and stuff. So, um, so at the end of the day, I love this project and I will finish it, but it's just going to take me time because I have a lot of engineering things I want to do and it costs money. So, you know, not asking for money. PayPal link for donations is always there, but I'm not asking. I'm just saying this stuff takes a lot of time, effort, engineering, and of course a little funding, but you know, that's life. And I'm happy to at least get this done. And then um, I'm really looking forward to making the heating section for this because I'm going to do something a little special that will be really cool if it works out. Um, and we'll get to that another day. I have no idea when. So if you've watched this the whole way through, you're a trooper. Thanks for watching. And thanks for being faithful in my ability to get this done one piece at a time. You got to remember, my goal was to build a printer from scratch, every piece on it. So far, the only thing I haven't made myself was the electronics, right? Everything else on this, I've really engineered by my hands, put it together. And the only reason I didn't do the electronics is because that is just way too much extra work. I am not going to do that. And I love these duet electronics. So, all right, I'm going to quit talking. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this nine arm delta. If you want to see more about this machine, you can see me build every single piece on here, one part at a time. Go to my website, rwgresearch.com. Look under 3D printing and check it out. See you later. I'm in my closet. Don't forget. The nine armed Delta working away, doing nothing, <laughs> just working. <laughs>